Hello friends, welcome back. My name's Ramon, how are you today? So, I've had this sunscreen in a suitcase now for the last three weeks. I've been trying to get this review going and up and started, but just a lot of things have gotten in the way. For example, we'll be across the pond to London. But now that I have a filming setup all set up, it's time to get started reviewing this. And this popped up on my social media about a month ago and it had some bold claims. Primarily that it was a lightweight gel texture sunscreen that uses only mineral filters that left absolutely no white caps. And it was from a brand that was very reputable from people that I actually really trusted. So I was like, I gotta try this out. And that sunscreen is the Pyongkang Yu ATO Mild Sun Cream. If you don't know, Pyongkang Yu is actually like, a, I see, in my opinion, a very decently big brand. They feature a lot of just very straight to the point and very moisturizing, hydrating products without a lot of actives. And as of my understanding, this is the first and only sunscreen that they've ever launched. So I'm gonna try it out. Before we get into it, I'm gonna ask you the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know when I post more sunscreen, skincare, fancy related content on this channel, give the video a thumbs up and down below. Have you tried this? What are your thoughts? So again, I saw people on social media posting about this. I don't know if it was Pyung Kang Yo like just finally announcing it and launching it or what. But I do know for a fact that Juan Skin Diary, another Latino content creator, AKA like one of the best product photographers doing it right now, really likes this. I think it's his holy grail. He was one of the first people I saw actually apply it and use it. And seeing it on him, I was like, oh, it looks really good on his skin. And he's a little bit darker than I am. My interest and my expectations are high. Going off of the website, and I actually got this off of Olali. I'm gonna read what they said. It's basically a lightweight but effective UV protection sun cream made off this broad spectrum mineral sunscreen protection, has hyaluronic acid, ceramides, and plant paste extracts to nourish even sensitive, delicate skin. Here's the deal. And it says it here very clearly on the website, but in order to find the SPF rating on this, I had to like look really hard and I don't know why. Like it's not on the front, it's not on the top. It's very small print on the back and it's an SPF 45 PA three pluses. And that three plus is not my favorite to see. The thing is finding an SPF with a PA above three pluses is rare for a mineral filter, but more so in that this only includes titanium dioxide. That is the sole mineral sunscreen filter in this. No zinc, just titanium, which I have some problems with. To me, titanium dioxide is not the most worthwhile broad spectrum UV filter. Zinc oxide actually does cover a majority of the UV spectrum. Titanium dioxide covers a smaller amount, and while it does get into some of the UVA protection values, it doesn't do a lot of that part of the spectrum. I mainly consider titanium dioxide a fortifier for zinc oxide, so I'm not the most trusting of the UV protection in this. But that being said, a lot of the other ingredients in this are really nice. As Olali kind of explains further, there's honeysuckle, which is calming, Green tea, amazing antioxidant. Mugwort extract, which is also soothing. I love mugwort in skincare. And it's really claiming to help repair the skin barrier, prevent moisture loss, and keep skin supple and firm. There's no scent, and again, no white cast apparently. It's gentle enough to use on most babies. As with the Suntique, I'm safe for sensitive skin, which I am predicting this to be the most similar to. That one as well was only a titanium dioxide based sunscreen. It was also claiming to be super, super safe for babies. I'm assuming slash under the impression that's just because zinc oxide itself can have some skin sensitizing effects on on it. I personally don't like zinc oxide. It like irritates and dehydrates my skin. So that's always something that's interesting to see. But looking at the back of this too, there's also propanediol and glycerin, a lot of other great humectants. So looking at this, I'm really just anticipating a super, super lightweight gel texture as seen on Juan's skin. I'm actually very, very hopeful so we leave no white cast. That being said, don't know about the UV protection. Explaining how I'm gonna be testing this over the next four days, I'm gonna be using my standard 4B mineral sunscreen testing rubric. And those 4Bs are beard, beading, beet, and brown skin friendly. How does this wear in facial hair, eyebrows, hairline? How does this work with other skincare? Is it beat up? Does it have any weird textures? Is it a pill? Beat, how does makeup apply on top of it? How does it affect the wear of makeup? And does it show through makeup? And brown skin friendly. Is it gonna leave a white cast? To what degree? What kind of brown skin is it gonna be best for? It'll be using a quarter teaspoon to measure out the sunscreen, applying that quarter teaspoon to my face, my ears, my neck, working that in for a few minutes and leaving it to set for at least five minutes before I go on to apply anything else on top of it. Day four will be my sunscreen only plus reapplication on top of itself day. So yeah, next time you see me is gonna be at the end of day four and we're gonna have my final thoughts on the Pyongyang Yul ATO Mild Sun Cream. So here we are after four days of testing the Pyongyang Yul ATO Mild Sun Cream and I have a lot of thoughts on this that I didn't think I would have. But first, let's look at the first four days of me testing this, what I thought of, and my opinions on it. For day one was the first day of me trying it, the first day of application, me feeling it, trying it out and all that stuff. As with all my mineral sunscreen filter testing, don't forget, I did a quarter teaspoon-ish on my face, ears, and neck. 
maybe more if I felt necessary. Let it set for five minutes after working it in a little bit and then went in with makeup on top of it. Day one was light skincare, very, very minimal hydrators and whatnot. And then this on top of it, as with all my day ones, I do a half face application first so you can see what the white cast looks like if there is any. Go in with the full face after that. And then I do a very light minimal beat. My thought when I first tried this on was, oh my gosh, this is really, really lightweight. This really does remind me a lot of the Santique. I'm safe for sensitive skin sunscreen. Working it in, it's just a really, really lightweight gel texture. Sinks in right away. And I was like, oh, there's like no white cast. Worked it into my skin for my full face, did makeup on top of it, and there was like no issues. My thought the entire day when I looked at my skin was I was like, wow, my skin looks radiant and juicy, but it's not greasy. The texture of this is really hydrating, but it's not emollient. So you're not getting that really thick, rich, moisturizing texture. Your skin is hydrated, it is moisturized, but it just sets down really nicely, leaving a radiant finish without being greasy. And that shows through with the makeup still. For day two was full skincare underneath. I'm talking hydrators, serums, moisturizer, gels, and creams, and the whole shebang basically. And this on top of it. And this is a really good day of testing because a lot of times you get to see what the emolliency underneath the sunscreen does to the sunscreen's texture. This performed like a dream. It worked into my skin beautifully. You can see in the application footage, it set down nicely. My skin still retained a lot of radiance again, but again, not not greasy, even with all the stuff underneath it. This was another light beat day, so simple makeup. And again, the radiance showed through the makeup. I looked very, very dewy, very supple, but I wasn't greasy. The makeup wear for this is actually really nice. I get no breakup around my nose, no weird creasing or whatnot in my eyelids, in my under eyes or my forehead. So far a win. Day three, light skincare, makeup. Full beats, full fancy face. I'm talking foundation, concealer, contour, bronzer, blush, highlight, everything. This really sets you up for success. Most of my fancy stuff is all mattifying. So it's the Pro Filter Soft Matte Foundation, the primer, uh, the Instant Retouch Setting Powder. So a lot of it's going to leave you matte, but I still found that through all of that, the makeup still retained some like lifelike natural skin qualities to it. I wasn't lifeless and flat. The makeup lasted beautifully throughout the day. My skin looked so smooth, so supple, so fresh. I just kept looking at myself in the mirror like, damn, I look good. Again, no weird texture issues. The makeup wore beautifully, nothing broke up. And then day four is just super simple skincare with just a sunscreen on top on a bare face, nothing on top of it. So you can see what the sunscreen looks like and how it wears on just a fresh bare face. On top of that, after a few hours, I reapply on top of itself so you see how it reapplies. But you can see this really does leave no white cast. It works beautifully into the skin, beautifully into the hairline, radiant, but not greasy. And even after a few hours, I think this was actually like a four or five hour wear test before reapplication, my skin was radiant, but not greasy and not heavy. And I reapplied on top of itself. And that's sometimes an area of contention just because sometimes the sunscreen reactivates the layer underneath and it gets kind of, mm, but no, it went on fine. And then sometimes physical sunscreen application just doubles up whatever white cast is underneath that. This didn't do it. It set down really nicely. It still looks really, really nice, really transparent on the skin, worked into the hairline just as nicely still, set down. So overall, I had a really positive experience with the wear of this, how it acted with the skincare underneath, makeup on top, and I had a really positive experience with it. Let's talk about my final thoughts. Starting it off by talking about my four Bs, my thoughts of that. Don't forget that is beard, beading, beats, and brown skin friendly. Beard, how I worked into the hairline. This didn't collect, get all gloppy and weird or collect in my hairline. It's worked in seamlessly and I had a haircut issue, so I had stubble for my hairline. And sometimes that's harder to work into and it sank in perfectly. It didn't collect in my brows or mustache. What I will say is on studio lights, I don't know how it looks. I thought it worked in really well into my beard and that's usually the worst area. It wasn't until I was out and about here in London in like the really gray, dreary, like blue light that my boyfriend was like, no, it's in your beard. I can see it. You still have like a really pronounced collecting of it in your beard. So I feel like that can get easily covered up with makeup if you try to. That being said, judge for yourself on the footage. I thought it was really minimal. Next is beading. Was there any weird peeling or balling up? Was there weird texture with skincare underneath and whatnot? Absolutely not. The way this texture is, which is a lightweight gel moisturizer like texture, it works perfectly with all the skincare that I had underneath it. And there was no weird texture issues, even when I was buffing on top of it, which gets into my next part. But love the texture of this amazing texture. Next is Beat Tire. Whereas with makeup, this prepped my skin beautifully for makeup. It really nourished it, moisturized it, gave a nice base. It didn't affect how the makeup applied. I could buff, I could do whatever on top of it, and then the makeup wore beautifully on top of it. What I will say is that this leaves you radiant. It's not emollient, it's not greasy, it's not like a cream moisturizer, but there's just like a radiance that exudes out of this that translates with makeup on top of it, which I personally love. So do with that what you will, but it didn't alter the wear of the makeup. It didn't do anything with the texture of it. Loved it. And then brown skin friendly. See for yourself on the footage, personally, 
I really love the way this looked at my skin. I saw no negative connotations with this. Juan Skin Diary, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, also loves this. He's a little bit darker than I am. No white cast on him. If I can find anything, I will link a source below with a deeper skin individual applying this so you can see what it looks like on deep skin. But I think this is high key a banger. If this is anything like the Santique I'm Safe for of Skin, this should be great for deeper skin tones just because Make It For One of Color, aka Tierra Willis. She was the one that recommended that one. It worked great on her skin tone. So I have high hopes for this. So. As of right now, this is brown skin friendly across the board. I will amend this if anything. Addendum. I actually have a subscriber and a follower named Refilo Melikela on Instagram. And she's on YouTube as well. I'll leave her socials on the screen as well as down below. Go follow her, go subscribe. But she actually responded to my story post talking about the Pyung Kang sunscreen. And she was like, I'm darker than Juan and it does leave a white cast on me. As you can see, she has a deeper skin tone than Juan and myself. So trust what she's saying. But she did say this has the least white cast of all their mineral sunscreens that she has tried. So that's a positive note. She does say that on her skin tone, the, when she reapplies the white cast as minimal as it is initially, it does get a little bit more pronounced. And it's more so in certain natural lighting, which I can attest to because the beard cast for me only really showed up in natural lighting. So if you have deeper, darker skin, try with caution. But on medium to medium dark skin tone, I'm fairly confident this is going to be minimal to no white cast. So my final thoughts on this, the formulation for this is really, really nice. It's super lightweight. The texture of this is light as air. It sinks in beautifully. The formulation is gentle. It's mild, as the title says. Titanium dioxide is a very low irritation risk filter. It's also coupled with things like honeysuckle, as well as green tea to help soothe the skin giving you some antioxidant benefits as well. And you have a lot of humectants in this. It's also just really rich in a lot of amino acids that act as humectants. So it's very humectant rich. Glycerin, sodium hyaluronate, ceramide in there for skin barrier strengthening, a lot of humectants. Beyond being really elegant, having no white cast, this washed off really easily, didn't alter anything with makeup. I had a really great experience with this. My only qualms with this, basically the fact that this is only titanium dioxide based with sunscreens that feature only titanium dioxide. There is less UVA protection for me. And that translates into the protection that the packaging advertises only having three pluses for the PA rating. Titanium dioxide isn't that girl for broad spectrum protection for me. I see it again as a fortifier for zinc oxide, which even for me isn't the most broad spectrum, the most high UVA coverage as possible. So in that area, I'm like, well, this won't be my primary sunscreen. Where I see this winning, if you are just someone who you have to have a mineral sunscreen filter and you do not like a white cast, this would be a great option. If you are someone who has really, really oily skin and you like mineral filters, but you want something that's not gonna be super greasy or heavy on the skin, great option. If you are someone who you just have an issue with chemical filters, you solely want to use mineral sunscreen and you just want something that's super easy and low maintenance, great option. Where I think this winning for me and where I would personally use this the most is reapplications throughout the day and reapplications over makeup. This sets in beautifully on top of itself. Again, the reapplication footage shows that this reapplied on itself really, really nicely. But the texture of this reminds me so much of chemical sunscreens that I really see this successfully going over makeup really nicely and really easily without messing up the layer underneath. So that's where I would primarily use this. With this, you get 75 mil for $22. I got this on Olali, but I'll list other retailers below if I find them. That's actually kind of a steal, I'm not gonna lie. The way that works out is basically it's about $8 per ounce. I think I did the math for that. That's actually really affordable, all things considered. So, so that's another win for this. This is fairly accessible in that it's pretty low cost for how much product you get. And this works for most, I'm not gonna say all, skin tones. So overall, I actually really enjoyed this. This is a really good experience. I will actually continuously use this mainly on days where I wear makeup, but also on like low maintenance days. Right now it's really cloudy, really rainy in London. I'm staying inside the house a lot. So this is kind of a stay inside sunscreen. I might not be the most willing to wear this outside on a bare face just because of beard cast. So, mm. and with that and having such a bare bones formulation for me, this is actually a very universally approachable sunscreen just because there's not a lot going on. So is this worth it? I actually say yes. This is a very mild formulation, very sensitive skin friendly, pretty brown skin friendly for the most part. And it's really cost effective, only $22 for 75 mils. So if you're looking for mineral sunscreen, it's gonna leave you no white cast to really lightweight on the skin and be the most universally approachable for most, if not all skin types. This is a winner. Pyong Kang Yul, ATO Mild Sun Cream. Ramon recommended? I'm gonna say yes. But thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, fancy related content on my channel. Give this video a thumbs up and down below. Have you tried this or will you try this? Let me know the reason. And what other recommendations do you guys have? Again, I love your recommendations. This is definitely super, super hot when it popped up on social media and I had people DMing me this, so I had to get it. And I wanna know what else you guys are going to try. I love your recommendations and they actually help me out a lot. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Bye.